today we're speaking with Kayvon Chauvier. Kayvon is an Iranian-American multidisciplinary artist and muralist born in Iran who currently resides in Southern California. He is one of the pioneers of Iranian street art in Tehran, focusing on and addressing social issues and political messages through Persian calligraphy and poetry. Kayvon creates sculptural and sculptural sound installations, murals, paintings, uh, all to explore the poetic experience of the current political situation uh, within narration and storytelling from the past and its juxtaposition with the present. All the narrations are rooted in his Iranian heritage through literature, history, and Persian myth, language, and today's pop culture. Kayvon, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Um, how are things in Southern California today? Hopefully not too warm. <laughs> uh, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. It's a little bit of a heat wave in Southern California. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it, it's such a pleasure to, to be able to speak with you about your work. Um, we are missing you in the Bay Area. Uh, that's where I first got to know your work, uh, first at CCA and then through working, uh, working with you in an exhibition you were part of that uh, Dr. Kathy Zorora and I curated. Um, and since then, I've just been just a great fan of your work. So it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be chatting with you just in any context. Thank you, pleasure, it's fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so how did, you, how did you arrive in the Bay Area? How did you, what brought you to this part of the world? And um, what were your, like, how did you, slowly start to piece out what a, what the Swan community looked like and how you would uh, integrate or find your way into that community. How did that, how did that all happen? So um, com, uh, me uh, coming to United States, uh, I think uh, most of the plan just happened and uh, I was in the rush because uh, like, you know, uh, I was working in Iran as an artist and, and working with some galleries and, um, and because the subject of my work, uh, which I was focusing on um, social issues, uh, I got arrested by the government several times. And I was uh, under pressure of, uh, like I was looking for a way to live as an artist and continue my creative practice. And uh, honestly, on that time, being in Iran was the, only future I was seeing was ending up in the prison. And, um, and yeah, and uh, I think uh, uh, I was just looking for a, a way to uh, quit, uh, uh, exit from this situation. So uh, it, it wasn't planned. Like when I came to uh, San Francisco airport, I just opened my laptop and I was looking for a motel or hotel or a place to stay. So uh, it, it just happened for me. It was just, uh, and I think I was, uh, because I had a lot of stress, I went to several interrogation. And uh, after that, I think uh, my mind doesn't function well because all the stress that I had. So I didn't have the luxury of freedom of, oh, which stage should I go? Do I like the weather up here or not? So I, I was just looking for a, a, a moment and a opportunity to go to come here. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it sounds like it was uh, on the heels of an experience that I certainly have never had. I would guess that many people have never had that the the trauma, the, the traumatization of imprisonment, interrogation, um, just the unspeakable fear, I imagine, that comes along with all of that. So to yeah. escaping that as quickly as you could and then arriving in a completely new place, <laughs> I yeah. think it, was, um, it could be uh, rather disorienting, but you've, you've come so far from that, from that particular space. Um, you mentioned um, the, the, the circumstances that forced you to, to leave Iran. Uh, would you say that um, as, you've, as you're working in your creative practice, is, is trauma something, do you feel it sort of working its way into, into, your, into your creative practice? Is it something that 
uh, informs your creative practice as much as you know everything else that you've listed say for example in the um in the bio i just read like you're looking at history you're looking at uh mythology like so much that is just rich and deep in Iranian history. Um, is trauma also something that you are finding makes, a pre makes, a, makes an appearance in the work? And, and how, how does that manifest if you feel comfortable speaking about it? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, it does have effect. I think uh, for me, my understanding, like how I see art uh, for me is a reaction based on uh, based on research or uh, whatever happened to my life, whether it's personal or whether it's about my country. So I think it's all uh, uh, connected together. Yeah, and uh, also um, being in this kind of like uh, uh, situation, I always like want to resist and I always want to like uh, stay on what I am not changing by uh, like situation and like, like a temporary rule that we have right now, like in our country. Yeah. Is it, um, is the, is trauma, is that something that, um, I guess the question is, uh, now that you're several, you know, almost, I'm guessing a decade past your, past your arrival. Um, is it something that sort of lingers and not to stay on this topic for too long, but it is, it's such a potent experience. And I think for many people in the Swana community, um, it's, it's a part of, you know, it's either generational trauma or something immediately experienced. But I imagine that's something that people you might encounter, that's something that they can identify with. And that's a potent, um, uh, subject to to in you know to work into a conversation so it's um i wonder if that's something that also like in your work but also sort of in getting to know people in the swana community is that something that you find you're able to to talk more freely about at this point um and maybe start to you know relieve a bit of that weight from your from your from your mind as far as those experiences are concerned um Mm, I can say yes a little bit because um, because uh, the way that uh, like when you are going through uh, like all this trauma and you find out like you are not alone. There is a lot of artists, activists, lawyers, and like regular people yeah. that they are uh, getting arrested because just having different uh, opinion or just critiquing, critiquing something or talking for, in my case, or talking about uh, um, social issues. Um, and it's, it's also like, uh, I think the way that government try to uh, limit us, the censorship is all they want to like uh, draw a line with the fear mm -hmm. that they say, this is the red line. You cannot speak about this subject. You cannot speak about this subject. And also, if you don't talk about this subject and you support us, we support you, you can go back and like, you can, so, you know, what I'm <laughs> talking about. So, so uh, I think understanding those red lines and like, uh, uh, and, work around it somehow in the smart way yeah. uh, would be like powerful. Yeah, absolutely. That is, yes, that is, that's incredibly powerful. And, and making the choice to, to be estranged from family, you know, to, to make the choice, like to live and work outside of uh, the context that was most familiar to you for, from the time you were a child. Um, and understanding that living and working in that space comes with uh, <clears throat> qualifications. Um, the government will only support you if you support them. And that's a, that's a terrific burden to, to struggle with. And yeah. it's, yeah, I imagine that's for many people in the Swana community or, or anyone that has faced um, such hard choices about how to live and where to live. Um, 
perhaps in a diaspora context um, that will resonate, I imagine, with many people who are who are listening to this and thinking about this, this same topic. Um, mm -hmm. Your work is is so broad in the in the execution of it and the subjects that you take up. Um, I'm thinking specifically about the mural work that you've done. And before you left the Bay Area, like you were working with local organizations on multiple uh, mural related projects. Have you found, um, now that you're in Los Angeles, have you found similar or, le or like-minded organizations that you want to work with? Is that something you'd like to continue doing? Uh, yeah, definitely is something that I like to continue to do uh, because I'm so interested in the uh, public art, even uh, graffiti, because uh, also some uh, organization, they don't recognize it as a art and they call it low art. They call themselves high art, which is high art should be in the white box uh, inside the gallery yeah. on the limited hours. Yeah. For the limited uh, people, sometimes you have to pay to go inside and see that art. And uh, uh, and like for me, uh, I can say like coming from middle class of Iran, I always saw like um, wealthy people ex uh, expose more art to them and they see more art. However, uh, middle class uh, are struggling with the daily basis and they even don't think about art. And maybe they listen to uh, music, some sort of art, which is only pop art. It's not high art, which totally I uh, don't agree with the categorization of the art. Yeah. But in general, uh, uh, I think it's something, uh, mural is something that, um, that tied with the people and life and uh, yeah, definitely I'm uh, in LA also uh, because there is a lot of diversity and there is a lot of potential and there is a lot of audience in here. Yeah, I'm definitely looking for an uh, organization to uh, connect with them. Yeah, that's that's good to hear um, just because the, the work that you were doing with the, the organizations here in the Bay Area, like it really had a a profound impact, uh, not just on for us as audiences, but for other artists who you are working with, and it's that continuity of um, uh, community, broadly defined like community art, but also as you beautifully pointed out, that it is breaking down those that um, elitist divide between like what is high art, what is low art, um, where is the spaces in which art is um, exhibited and valued. Um, you know, in a in a context such as you know street murals versus what one would find in the white cube. Um, I I love that you move that you move so uh, gracefully between those two spaces, but that you're also I mean very aware of what uh, presentational context means for your work and who's like who has access to it, who sees it, um, and just the like how we as consumers have access to it that's i mean it's a huge it's a huge consideration for um for so many artists and that that is worked into your practice is not surprising at all but it's a beautiful um it's just one more thing i think to to admire about the work itself and and your work generally um there are uh poets and iranian poets and artists in history that uh, come up are referenced frequently in your work. Um, I'm thinking of Conference of the Birds. Uh, is that is that a, a is that something that you find yourself going back to frequently to to read and to to incorporate into your work? Like, what what's your connection to that particular uh, literature? Um, so the poet is Atar uh, Atar Neshaburi, who was. Uh, how I can uh, translate in English, who, who was master of Rumi. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were, uh, and he, uh, they really um, influenced each other. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, and um, I, in this project, I think uh, Conference of the Bird, uh, it was, uh, it is a still ongoing project because I'm also developing the, some, uh, uh, technical things to make it more interact 
and also in the concept, uh, I'm continuing reading it, and every time it, it through my research, uh, uh, it's funny, but I uh, learned a lot. So, uh, and I've learned a lot, and I think in uh, in in this work, I uh, came across to. Uh, to read it and like to critique, not just appreciate what I'm uh, seeing as like a, the master classic piece of poetry of Iran, but also you can critique that you can critique anything. So that's uh, that's why, why I, I think the reason of having conversation with art and artwork is to just ask question yeah. and questioning. Yeah, absolutely. Um it's easy to, I would imagine, it's easy to look at these uh, historical figures or uh, poetry that is poetry as an example. It's so celebrated. And uh, I can only imagine what it looks like to read it on the page, to listen to it in Farsi. I've only ever, like, only ever in English have I read it. And I imagine that there's some, you know, something that's missing between the Farsi and the English translation. And there's something beautiful in that. Um, that there is that it was written in 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 its original language that um, translation simply cannot capture. And there's something lovely about that because maybe it wasn't meant to be. Uh, maybe that's the nature of it. But about not only poetry, but uh, poetry in a different language than the one that that you know that I speak, for example. Um, and I love thinking about you working in that space of translation, um, and that there is something that you that we are simply, that we don't have access to just based on the language. Um, and that's a that's a beautiful mystery that is carried through, I think all of your work as much as, 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 much as I've seen it. And I, I personally love that element of it. Um, and I imagine it's a really satisfying space for you to work in as well. Um, so mm -hmm. there's, there's that. Um, yeah, definitely. I think uh, most, because uh, you mentioned uh, transition and translation also i think yeah. most uh, uh particularly in uh in my case like conference of the bird or a uh, poet of rumi the phonetic of the uh, reading of the poem uh give you the right uh, understanding of the poem because also uh, like one part of the uh, poet in iran is uh, the sound and phonetic of the yeah. poet which kind of musical uh, aspect of the poet that uh, it's uh, that you can see in in the in the literature and when you translate that you you lost that and uh, that one thing that another thing is uh, like what is valuable for my culture yeah. could be like uh, not valuable for your culture and when you translate that you 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 totally lost the meaning yeah 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 uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I imagine, I hope that it's uh, a happy reminder of home, of family, of all the, all of the connections that you necessarily had to leave behind in order to live your life and live with relative safety, like in the United States. Um, but I, I do hope that it's a, that there is, you know, that there is some, it sounds like there is, like, it's a very positive, like, it's a happy reminder of of home and the beauty of the Farsi language and the way that it's just so masterfully dis, uh, deployed in Conference of the Birds. It's an extraordinary book in English. I can only imagine what it's like in Farsi. Um, so it's uh, I, it's a fascinating connection that you have there and the constant sort of revisiting and reinterpretation and critique of it is yeah. that's a powerful position to work from in your, in your creative practice. Yeah. Um, so with Zamin Project, we're thinking about uh, resources, what it means for us as a community to, to identify them, to uh, build them, to sustain them. So when you think of uh, Swana community and you think of resources, um, what comes to mind for you? So about <clears throat> resources, um, I want to just go with my case because I didn't have the time to think about like which part. And so you are... Uh, for instance, there is a person who has basic needs and he just 
coming to a new places. So he need he need a place to stay. He need the job. He need the community. He need education. He need the therapy. The most important things, especially if he had some trauma in Iran, yeah. in his country. Um, other than that, uh, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, resources, job, uh, a place to stay, I think is also the most important. Yeah, yeah, these are all, and and that you, I, I, again, like, as you said, like speaking for yourself, that it was something that was, <laughs> you arrived here with literally nothing, you know, like this is a brand new start for you when you arrived right. in the United States. Um, and I imagine that finding those resources, finding like the basics that help keep a person alive, but, in addition to that, you know, who, who in your community can you um, connect with? Like, how can you, how do you start to develop those relationships and what comes out of those relationships? It's a, I, you hit on something really powerful, which is like uh, resources is something that it, they take time to build, like whatever that is. It's, um, as you mentioned, sort of like meeting one's basic survival needs, um, but also building community, finding those connections, like having those conversations about this, like building up and sustaining these resources. Um, it's not, it's not, it doesn't happen overnight. And that seems like exactly. it's a fairly basic observation, but um, for someone speaking for myself, someone who has resources like available immediately at hand, that's a very different experience than what you had upon arriving. And it's, it's a good, you know, it's a, for me, it's a, it's a good reminder of, um, just the, the work, the effort that's put into that and uh, an appreciation for how many resource, like what resources there are in this in the Swana community, and how abundant they are. And that it's something that as, we working, as we're working together, engaging those who are new to our community, making sure that they know what they have, that we are here to, to help, to support them, like do anything that we can to make that transition slightly, uh, slightly more, slightly easier. If, if possible. So I think, yeah, that's, um, that's something profound, I think, that you hit on there. Um, it's always oh, it's a pleasure chatting with you. But um, so, okay, so for the last question, uh, you've just moved from the Bay Area, you're now in Los Angeles, living mm -hmm. your life there. Um, what are you, what's, what are you thinking about mostly these days? Like what's foremost in your mind at this point? Um, I think uh, these days, uh... I'm thinking about uh, Iran a lot. Uh, yeah. Last week, uh, several cities of Iran people uh, just protesting in the street because they didn't have uh, electricity and water. And the answer with the government was with the bullets and machine gun to them. Yeah. And also breathing, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about like, uh, there is coronavirus, uh, there's no vaccine in, in Iran and like my family is there, my uh, sister is there. So I'm thinking about uh, um, a lot of uh, things yeah. know, back to home. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, it, it's so hard like <laughs> waking up and watching the news and see like, oh, Iran attacking other uh, things. So it's, it's kind of like hard to sustain, but uh, that's something that I'm attached to. Yeah. Um, when you, so when you're understandably necessarily thinking about home and family and all of the, the chronic challenges that, you know, Iranians face, like how does, um, to, how, I guess, how do you manage that? Is that through, uh, I guess, I'm guessing conversation with your partner, with friends, with family, like, because it's a lot to take on psychologically like how do you how do you if it's all right to ask like how do you start to to manage that so that you can get through your day or get through a week or a month or a year i think some part of it is by making art especially uh some uh especially uh painting when i do like calligraphy it's kind of meditating you don't think about anything you lost in the gesture and your muscle memory and you're doing something yeah. On the background, there is a poet, there is a history that uh, there is a culture that you are uh, painting it, you are representing it. 
also yeah talking with my uh, family with viber or any like other apps just make sure that they are okay just hearing from them it's kind of like make me temporarily calm it's good yeah yeah i i the temporary calm i suppose is better than none at all um but i right. hope that, uh, i hope that your family is safe and healthy everyone that you know and love is as uh, they're doing as well as they can, given just the, the chronic circumstances. Um, but yeah, just that, yeah, just to hope for, a hope for their well-being overall. And um, thank you. Thank you uh, for speaking with us for part of Zemin Project. Um, yours is a, it's a powerful and um, much needed voice. And we're really lucky that you, that you spoke with us. So um, thank you for that. And yeah. the audience, thank you for joining us. And we'll see you here for Zemin Project. Thank you. Thank you.